Hey everybody and welcome to another deep dive with us. Today we're going to be tackling something pretty fascinating. Yeah. The quest for an HIV vaccine. Absolutely. You know, whether or not you're interested in medical breakthroughs or just, you know, fascinated by really, really tough challenges. Mm -hmm. This one has it all. Yeah. We're digging into a great article from Healthline called HIV vaccine. How close are we? Right. And it really lays out just how different HIV is from yeah. other viruses. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting because HIV has kind of stumped scientists for decades. Oh, really? Yeah. It really breaks a lot of the rules that make other vaccines possible. Okay. So break it down for me. Like what makes HIV such a tough opponent in this, in this vaccine race? Well, you know, a couple things. Okay. One is that our immune systems don't naturally fight HIV as effectively as they do like measles okay. or the flu or chicken pox. So bodies don't even really produce antibodies against it? Well, we do. Okay. But they're not as powerful or as long lasting as they would need to be to be effective. Okay, so they're there, but they're not. They're there, but they're not doing their job as well as they should. Not strong enough. Right. And then on top of that, you know, yeah. HIV is constantly mutating. Yeah. It's like a master of disguise. It's changing all the time. So it's like our immune system is struggling to recognize it. Yeah. And then on top of that, the virus itself is like exactly. changing. So. It's like a moving target. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then you add another layer of complexity on top of that. Okay. Most vaccines work by preventing infection altogether, right? Right. HIV actually inserts itself into our DNA oh, well, so it can hide. It's like it becomes part of us. Yeah, exactly. So right. even if you got a vaccine, you could still theoretically get infected. Potentially, yeah. That's a little unsettling. It is. It's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. Okay, so it sounds like it's more about controlling the virus right. than eliminating it. Exactly. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Yeah, and this is where this idea of a therapeutic vaccine comes into play. Okay, what is that? What's a therapeutic vaccine? So a therapeutic vaccine, it wouldn't prevent the infection, okay. but it would be given to people who are already living with HIV. Oh, okay. And it would train their immune systems to keep the virus in check so it wouldn't be as impactful. So like minimizing the effects. It really. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. It sounds like HIV research is really... It's cutting edge. Yeah. Cutting edge, pushing the boundaries. Absolutely. That's really cool. Yeah. And you know, while we haven't quite cracked the code for a preventative vaccine yet, yeah. there have been some really important breakthroughs. Okay. Uh, one of them was the RV144 trial okay. in Thailand back in 2009. I've heard about that one. That was the first one that showed some promise. Right? That was the first one to show that an HIV vaccine could actually offer some protection, wow. even if it wasn't perfect. Okay. Uh, it used a prime boost approach which is basically a two-step vaccination strategy. Oh, interesting. You prime the immune system with one type of vaccine, and then you boost it with another to create a stronger response. So why didn't this lead to a widely available vaccine? Well, the trial showed a 31% reduction in HIV transmission. Okay. Which was huge, uh, a huge scientific advance. That's amazing. But it wasn't considered effective enough for widespread use. Okay. However, it was really valuable because it proved that a vaccine could work. Right. It opened the door for more research. So it's like they found a promising path and now they're just trying to optimize it. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. And so one of the trials that stemmed from that was the HBTN 702 trial. Okay. That took place in South Africa. Okay. And it built upon the RV144 findings. Using a similar approach? Using a similar approach, but with modifications. To try to get better results. Exactly. To see if they could improve the protection. It sounds like scientists are always building on previous knowledge. Absolutely, yeah. You know, constantly refining. Right. Adapting their strategies. Yeah. And that's even when trials don't go as planned right. Yeah. Like, I remember hearing about the HVTN 505 trial. Right. And that one was stopped early because it didn't work. Right. So what happens in a case like that? Well, even trials that don't meet their goals yeah. are really valuable learning experiences. Oh, okay. So the 505 trial, it gave researchers a ton of data okay. that helped them understand HIV better. That makes sense. So it's not a failure. It's just a step in the process. It's like a course correction. Yeah, exactly. To kind of get things back on the right path. Exactly. That's good. I'm glad that it's not all just wasted. No. Nah. trial doesn't. Every bit of information helps. That's good. Yeah, and it's not like researchers are putting all their eggs in one basket. Yeah. There's a lot of different types of vaccines being explored. Like what? Give me the rundown. What's in this vaccine variety pack? 
So there are peptide vaccines, okay. which use small fragments of HIV proteins okay. to trigger the immune response. Got it. There are DNA-based vaccines, okay. which deliver HIV genes directly into cells. Okay. And then there are live vector vaccines, okay. which are similar to how the smallpox vaccine works. Wow. They use a harmless virus to carry HIV genes. Wow. And then we even have virus-like particle vaccines. Okay. Which mimic the structure of HIV. Wow. Without containing any actual genetic material. So it's like they're throwing everything they can at this. Yeah. Well. And seeing what sticks. Well, it's a complex virus. Right. And there's no one-size-fits-all solution. That makes sense. So each vaccine has its own strengths and weaknesses. Okay. And so by exploring a bunch of different options, it increases the chance that we're going to find one that actually works. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm definitely curious to learn more about all these different approaches. Yeah, so definitely. We'll have to dig into that a little bit further. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we'll make a quick break and we'll be right back to talk more about the quest for an HIV vaccine. Yeah. It's like having a whole arsenal, you know, and choosing the right weapon for the right battle. And speaking of strategy, mm -mm. one area of research that's really exciting right now is broadly neutralizing antibodies. Oh, those sound cool. Yeah. Tell me about those. So broadly neutralizing antibodies are really interesting because they can target multiple strains of HIV. Okay. Unlike the traditional antibodies that we've talked about that are usually specific to just one strain. Mm. Oh, that's cool. And so this is really important because yeah. remember, HIV is constantly mutating. Right. It's changing its appearance. Exactly. So broadly neutralizing antibodies can kind of see past that. Oh, wow. And recognize core features of the virus that stay the same. So they can kind of see through the disguises. Exactly. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. So how are scientists trying to harness this power in a vaccine? Well, there are a few different approaches. Okay. One promising one is called vectored immunoprophylaxis. Okay. And essentially what this means is they're using a harmless virus, like a common cold virus, okay. as a delivery system. Oh, interesting. And they modify this virus yeah. to carry the genetic instructions for these antibodies. Okay. And then when this modified virus is introduced to the body, it delivers those instructions to our cells. Okay. And it tells them to start making these broadly neutralizing antibodies. That's fascinating. Yeah, it's like giving our cells the blueprint yeah. to build their own defense force. Well, that's so cool. Yeah, and so this approach has shown some really encouraging results. Really? Yeah, there was a trial in the UK, Okay. the IAVI A003 trial, Okay. and it found that they were able to induce the production of these broadly neutralizing antibodies. Wow, so it actually worked. Yeah. That's awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah, it sounds like we're getting closer yeah. To a vaccine that could offer more, like, robust protection. Yeah, definitely. I'm also curious about those therapeutic vaccines that we talked about. Right. What kind of progress is being made there? So therapeutic vaccines are still a really promising area of research. And, you know, these vaccines are really focused on improving the lives of people already living with HIV. Okay. And the goal is to kind of boost their immune system's ability to control the virus. Got it. So essentially turning down the volume on HIV's activity. Okay, so like giving the immune system a power up. Exactly. To fight the virus. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. So there are several approaches being tested. Okay. Um, some of them are focusing on targeting targeting certain parts of the virus that are essential for its replication. Okay. So if we can train the immune system to recognize and attack those vulnerable points, yeah. then we can really reduce the amount of virus in the body. Wow. That would be a game changer. Definitely. It's inspiring to see how science is tackling this virus from so many different angles. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, with prevention and treatment. It's really remarkable. Yeah. And speaking of tackling the virus, another area of research that's gaining a lot of traction okay. is focusing on those very early stages of HIV infection. Okay. So, you know, after the initial exposure. Yeah. HIV establishes itself in the body really quickly. So it's like a race against time. Exactly. Wow. So researchers are exploring ways to develop vaccines that can kind of act preemptively. Oh, okay. So they're getting the immune system ready okay. to fight off HIV the moment it enters. That's like a welcoming committee of, like, defenses. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. So this is often referred to as 
pre-exposure prophylaxis or pre-P. Right. You might be familiar with pre-B as like a daily pill. Yeah. But imagine if we could get that same level of protection. With a vaccine? With a vaccine. That would be amazing. Yeah, it would be huge. Especially in terms of like accessibility and convenience. Absolutely. Yeah, because like remembering to take a pill every day right. is a lot harder than just getting like one shot. Exactly. That's a really cool approach. Yeah, and as technology continues to advance, yeah. we're getting even more tools to fight this virus. Yeah, like what? Well, one that's really creating a lot of buzz is CRISPR. CRISPR. That's the gene editing technology, right? That's it. Wow. Okay, so what role could that play in HIV research? Well, CRISPR has the potential to revolutionize both HIV prevention and treatment. Wow. So imagine being able to modify a person's immune cells yeah. and making them more efficient at fighting HIV. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we could potentially engineer cells to recognize and destroy HIV more effectively. Okay. Or even target and eliminate the virus hiding in our DNA. Wow, sounds like something out of a movie. It does. But it could be real. It could be. That's amazing. Yeah, and while CRISPR is still in its early stages, the possibilities it presents are really exciting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about so many different avenues of research. That's a lot. It's a lot to take in yeah. from, you know, broadly neutralizing antibodies to gene editing. Mm -hmm. It seems like the quest for an HIV vaccine is a story of like constant innovation. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of ingenuity. But with all these approaches being explored, what do you think is the most likely path to a successful vaccine? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Right. Um, I think it's probably going to be a combination of things. Okay. It's not going to be just one breakthrough, Early. but imagine a vaccine that combines the power of broadly neutralizing antibodies with gene editing. Wow. All delivered through a really sophisticated vector system yeah. that triggers a rapid and long-lasting immune response. Wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah. But even beyond vaccines, I mean, we've made some incredible progress in HIV treatment. Right? We have, absolutely. Yeah. Antiretroviral therapy, or RT, right. has been completely transformative for people living with HIV. Yeah. These medications work by suppressing the virus, okay. keeping it from replicating and damaging the immune system. So even without a vaccine, there are ways to manage HIV and live a healthy life. Exactly. That's good. Yeah, with RT, people living with HIV can have undetectable viral loads. Wow. Which means the virus is so suppressed, it can't be transmitted to others. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. It's a huge breakthrough for both individual and public health. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really important to remember that. Okay. If it's very encouraging. It is. To hear that, you know, even while we're searching for this vaccine. Right. There are still tools to combat this virus. Absolutely. That's good. And it brings us to a really important point. Okay. Even though we've made so much progress in HIV research. Yeah. There's still work to be done, okay. both in terms of scientific advancements, but also in addressing the social stigma right. that still surrounds HIV. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's super important. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's not just about the science, it's about the social and cultural factors too. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where education and awareness come in. Right. So by understanding the science behind HIV, yeah. breaking down those myths, and misconceptions, yeah. we can create a more supportive and informed environment. For everyone. For everyone, exactly. I think that's a great point. Yeah. It's been really fascinating, like exploring the world of HIV research with you. Yeah, it's been great. I feel like I've learned so much. Me too. You know, just about the complexity of this virus and how hard scientists are working to find solutions. Yeah, it's a field that's always changing, you know? It's full of challenges, but also so much creativity and ingenuity. Yeah, and I think that's what's so inspiring about it. Definitely. You know, the progress we've made in just a few decades is incredible. It really is. From, like, understanding the virus to developing effective treatment. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, and it's a testament to human resilience, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And the power of scientific inquiry, you know? And speaking of power, I think it's also important to acknowledge like the role of activism. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The activists and advocates out there have been such a driving force. Yeah. In raising awareness, challenging stigma, and pushing for more funding. Absolutely. You know, for research and treatment, they've been crucial. Yeah. It's a reminder that science doesn't just happen in a vacuum. Right. You know, it's influenced by social and political forces. Absolutely. And it takes, like, the collective action of individuals and communities to really drive progress. Let me agree more. 
Yeah. And that kind of brings us to another important piece of this. Yeah. Education. Education. Absolutely. You know, knowledge is power when it comes to HIV. 100%. And the more we understand about it, how it's transmitted, how it can be prevented and treated, yeah. the better we can protect ourselves in our communities. Exactly. So for people out there listening, like, what are some key things that they should know? Well, you know, first and foremost, know your HIV status. Oh, okay. Get tested regularly. It's a simple but powerful way to take control of your health. Yeah. And uh, like how often should people be getting tested? Well, it depends on individual risk factors. Okay. But in general, it's a good idea to get tested at least once a year. Okay. And more often if you have multiple partners or engage in other high risk activities. Okay. That makes sense. And problem. there are so many different testing options available now. Oh yeah. Including rapid tests that can give you results in like 20 minutes. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, so there's really no excuse not to get tested. And I'm assuming early detection makes a big difference. Oh, huge. Yeah. It can really impact treatment outcomes and prevent the spread of the virus. Okay, so if someone does test positive for HIV, mm -hmm. what's the next step? Well, it's important to remember that HIV is not the death sentence it used to be. Right. With access to antiretroviral therapy. Yeah, the RT we talked about. Exactly. People can live long and healthy lives. That's really reassuring to hear. Yeah, absolutely. It's a message of hope for sure. Definitely. You know, HIV doesn't have to define a person's life. Right. There's treatment, there's support. A whole community out there. Yeah, a whole community of people living with HIV. Exactly. That's amazing. And don't forget about pre-P. Oh, right. Pre-exposure prophylaxis. Yes. For people who are at higher risk. Exactly. So if you're at higher risk of HIV exposure, taking pre-PP daily can really reduce the chances of getting infected. Okay, so it's another way to be proactive exactly. about your sexual health. Exactly, and while condoms are still a very effective way to prevent HIV, yeah, well, it's good to have multiple prevention options available. Right, so you can choose what works best for your situation. Exactly. Okay, that's really good information. Yeah, and for anyone who wants to learn more about HIV research and advocacy, yeah, there are some great resources out there. Okay, like what? Well, there's the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative, or IAVI. Okay, I've heard of that. Yeah, their website's amazing. It's full of information on the latest research and ways to get involved. So you can kind of stay up to date on everything that's happening. Exactly. That's cool. And there are also tons of local organizations and community health centers right. that offer support and resources. So you can get that like personalized help. Exactly. Okay, well, this has been a really enlightening deep dive. Yeah. It has. I feel like we've only scratched the surface. There's always more to learn. Always more to learn, right? The landscape is always changing. But I think what's clear is that the search for an HIV vaccine and the progress we've made in treatment and prevention mm -hmm. really offers hope for a future without this virus. Absolutely. It's a story of resilience, ingenuity, and determination. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. And I think it's a story that we're all a part of. Absolutely. Whether we're scientists or activists or just informed individuals trying to make a difference. Exactly. So that's it for today's DARP Dive. Thanks for joining us. But we'll be back soon with more fascinating topics to explore. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.